one aspect of the International Space Station's mission is to find out how the human body reacts to spending a long period of time in weightlessness, as future astronauts will do on missions to Mars and other destinations out into the solar system. There is an experiment about to begin on the station that's focusing on the impacts to the human heart, looking at potential changes to heart muscle cells. Recently, my colleague Pat Ryan spoke with Arun Sharma of the Stanford University School of Medicine, one of the co-investigators of the experiment known as heart cells, and started by asking him to explain what negative effects to the human heart have been seen in astronauts after long-duration space missions. Right, so it's been pretty well established by a number of studies that have come out over the recent years that the heart actually changes shape on the organ level. So actually, over a long-term exposure to microgravity, the heart assumes more of a spherical shape as opposed to the normally fist-like shape that it has uh, ground side. And this is something that happens over a period of few weeks, and usually that shape returns to normal after the astronauts return ground side. In addition, there is some, uh, somewhat of a muscle mass loss or muscle atrophy that happens as a result of long-term exposure to microgravity. The heart and the other muscles in the body simply don't have to do as much work, and so therefore, to compensate, they actually reduce some of their muscle mass. Does the change in shape impact the heart's efficiency? It usually does not because it is not at a substantial enough level uh, on orbit to do so. And is, is there a way to build back up the mass that it's lost? I mean, we do exercises uh, for astronauts to try to recover other muscles that are impacted by weightlessness. Absolutely. So the heart, of course, is just another muscle, and it can be trained as well. So, you know, once when the astronauts do their regular exercises on orbit, the heart will also uh, be able to restore some of that lost muscle mass. Although the heart is actually a very unique and a very interesting organ, because after something that does damage to the heart, say a heart attack, it actually does not replace a lot of its lost cells. So, for example, a number of the other tissues in the body, such as the skin, have a really strong regenerative capacity. But once heart cells are lost, it's very difficult for them to come back. I understand that you have to keep human heart cells in culture in order to, to study them in space. Uh, so you and your colleagues have found a way to do that, because doing it is, is a difficult thing. You found a way to, uh, to do that in order to get the experiment samples to study. Explain what that process is. Absolutely. So it's pretty tough to culture primary human heart tissue or human heart tissue from uh, patients for a very long period of time. Our lab and other labs around the world are trying to figure out ways to keep these cells alive long-term in culture, but so far we've only been able to do so for two to three weeks. But recently, over the last 10 years or so, there have been revolutionary advances in the field of stem cell biology. And this has enabled us to actually create heart cells from a type of stem cell population called an induced pluripotent stem cell, or IPSC. And to do this, we basically take a small sample of a patient's own skin or blood cells, usually white blood cells, and we can reprogram these white blood cells into a stem cell-like state after about a one-month-long process. And once those IPSCs, those induced pluripotent stem cells, are created, we can turn them into really whatever cell type we're interested in, such as a brain cell, liver cell, skin cell, and since we're a cardiovascular research institute, we're interested in heart cells. And so the protocol that we can actually use to create these heart cells from these uh, IPSC stem cells is about a two-week long process. But at the end of the road, we actually get these visually contracting, these beating heart cells that you can see visually contract under a microscope or sometimes with your naked eye. And these are the cells that you're about to launch to the space station to, to study. Uh, e explain what happens once you get them to orbit. How, how long are they there? What's the process? Are the human crew members helping? Exactly. So we will be utilizing these IPSC-derived heart cells as our model system to study the effects of microgravity on single cell function, on heart function. Unlike primary human heart tissues, these cells can actually survive for a very long time in cell culture, 
So we've actually been able to grow them for longer than a year in our cell culture dishes. And so once these cells are actually launched into orbit, they'll be maintained on orbit for about one month, uh, in particular by Dr. Kate Rubens, who is, is now at the International Space Station. Right. And what Dr. Rubens will be doing is changing the nutrients on these cells on a weekly basis. In addition, she'll also be looking at changes in cell shape, size, feeding rates. Uh, these are some of the things that she'll be helping us out with. And then they're going to be brought back to Earth for you to study. Uh, what are you looking for when you get these samples back in the lab? Yeah, so we actually will have a parallel set of samples, ground side controls, to which we'll compare our space-flown samples once they actually return to the lab. And this is important because we'll be able to see what are the exact, what is the impact of microgravity in particular on changing uh, cell size, cell shape, cell beating rates, and also another factor, gene expression. We want to be able to see what's the effect of microgravity on altering, altering uh, the gene expression of these space-flown heart cells. And this is by is comparing the two, the, the cells that have been to space versus the ones that have stayed on Earth. Exactly. So we'll be comparing the ground side samples to our space flown samples. Would you imagine that, I mean, what is it you're trying to find? Could your results have some impact for astronauts as well as people with heart issues on Earth? Potentially, definitely. Yes, I definitely think there is some application for regenerative medicine ground side as well. As I mentioned earlier, the heart is a really unique organ in that it has a very limited ability to regenerate itself. And so we're always looking for novel new ways that we might be able to restore heart function after injuries such as a heart attack. And we really don't know what's the effect of microgravity on the single heart cell, but we have a hypothesis that maybe this uh, unique stimulus will be able to enhance cell division in a way that's not really possible ground side. And so we're really excited to be able to use the International Space Station as a really unique resource and as a way to access a, an environment that's not available here on Earth. It'll be interesting to, uh, to see what results you get. Uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to explain what you're, what you're working on. No problem. Thank you for having me. Arun Sharma of the Stanford University School of Medicine is one of the co-investigators on the experiment Heart Cells, about to get started on the International Space Station.